Advanced Metaphysics, a lecture by Jonathan Barlow Gee. Electrons. In the Bohm model of the atom, we see here the magnetically attractive atomic nucleus surrounded by the magnetically repelled electron cloud of varying orbital shell energy levels. Of course, we know this model is greatly oversimplified from the real-world orbital paths taken by the electron in its orbital shell. We can only predict these roughly using interactions from the photoelectric effect. Thus, as we see in the standard Bohm model, there is a substrata allocated in this diagram of mind between the positive nucleus and the negative electron, and this inner shell reflects the ability of an electron to temporarily store a photon. First, let us examine the electromagnetic effect that causes attraction between atoms to form covalently bonded molecules. For the purpose of demonstration, we assume the magnetically positive poles to form an axis around the middle of which develops the magnetically negative electron's orbital shell's rough equator. We see the magnetically attractive poles here in green and the equator of the electron shell at a right angle to them we see as a red circle surrounding the green line. Thus, there are two forms of electromagnetic conductivity that can occur as a result of aligning electrons based on whether the electrons are aligned along the axis of their poles or along their equatorial circumference. When the wavelength is of magnetically aligned electrons that are oriented along their magnetically attractive polar axis, the result is called direct current, which offers unrestricted capacitance, limited in an inverse exponential amount by distance, determined by the medium through which the electricity is channeled. The other form of electromagnetism occurs when the electrons are being magnetically aligned along their equatorial circumferences and is called alternating current because magnetically positive capacitance will alternate with magnetically negative resistance along this form of a wavelength. Because the positively magnetic polar axis is perpendicular to the equatorial circumference of the negatively magnetic electron's orbital shell, and because these can both be aligned into patterns along wavelengths by orienting them using magnetism, the electromagnetic force can be graphed as two wavelengths, as we see here in green for the magnetically positive polar axis, and red for the magnetically negative electron's equator, along a single central axis for both however, that operate at a right angle to one another. Because these combined forms of electron alignment according to magnetism combine to form the single force of the electromagnetic spectrum, and because of the discovery of the electromagnetic force's interaction with electromagnetically neutral photons, the so-called photoelectric effect, we cannot discuss the combination of these three components to form the electromagnetic forces full spectrum without discussing the photoelectric effect as well. To do this, we will next discuss photons, which combine with AC and DC forms of aligned electron wavelengths to comprise the full electromagnetic forces spectrum. Photons for photons, first we examine them according to a form of electronic schematic designed by Richard Feynman. According to Feynman's initial premise, a magnetically neutral photon occurs when a magnetically attractive positron combines for some period of time with a magnetically repulsive electron. We see here now, according to Feynman's model, a positron and electron can cooperate for a duration as a photon wavelength and then once again break apart to emit a single positron and a single electron. This positron-electron pairing may be what results in the effects we observe from the classical double-slit experiment
often touted as proving light acts holographically. It appears that when interrupted by interference with the solid material object, a photon wavelength will break into multiple parts, and each part will travel simultaneously through all of the multiple slits or permeations through the material interference. The light expresses this doubling effect in the form of losing half its luminosity, and it seems to be this that accounts for the inverse square law of light diminishing with distance from the source of its emission. Here we see a potential extended form of the double slit experiment using six material barriers, each with either two or three permeations or slits. According to my predictions, we can extrapolate various frequencies of wavelengths by controlling their refraction in this way. The resultant wave pattern formed on an emissions receiver at the opposite side of the interfering obstructions would have as many points of origin as obstructions, and we can see using the six-walled form of the double-slit experiment that the emission spectrum on the receiver would resemble the hexagonal arrangement of the quantum chromodynamics applying to stable forms of quarks. To further break this model down, we can see how a wavelength divided by four layers of obstructive interference would refract into four points of origin surrounded by ripples outward of less and less often placed randomly scattered positron-electron repairings. Here we see that by applying this same method of light refraction using four walls of interference to graph a pattern on a flat receiver, we can measure a Lorentz transform of the surface motion on the topology of a torus aligned along a single axis penetrating it perpendicularly to its interior axis and to its exterior equator. The topological pattern of the torus, such as we see here, can seem complex. There is a horizontal wavelength penetrating the torus along its latitudinal equator in yellow. The outermost circumference of the torus is comprised of a coil that in the diagram is colored green from the outside and blue inside. The latitudinal spiral in red traces from the equator to the processing polar axis, the offset vertical angled purple line. The photoelectric effect. Having now studied how magnetic electrons behave in AC and DC voltage currents, and how photons combine a positron and electron that can be infinitely divided in halves, diminishing its luminosity according to the inverse square law, let us now study the combination of the electromagnetic force spectrum and the photoelectric effect. The photoelectric effect is known to us simply by colors. The wavelengths of photons that transmit light received to our eyes from all the objects we can see are caused to assume certain colors of the rainbow spectrum by the composition of the elements they are reflecting off of. This reaction occurs such that all the atomic elements and thus all the larger molecular forms of matter reflect one hue of light and refract it to bounce off at another angle and another frequency, carrying a frequency of wavelength our eyes would interpret as a different color. The spectral chromatic effect can only occur because photon wavelengths of one frequency or color will reflect off electron energy shells of various different levels and sums of electrons on each per atomic element as a different frequency or color of light. The photoelectric effect can be modeled as I have here using a green circle to signify the electron's orbit in its energy shell level, red to signify an approaching photon prior to impact with and absorption into the electron's orbital energy shell level, and blue to signify a retreating photon following ejection and emission from the electron's orbital energy shell level.
This aspect of the photoelectric effect, that the massless photon is absorbed into the electron's energy shell for any duration at all, regardless of how briefly, before being immediately reflected off its surface, has long puzzled quantum mechanics. The frequency of the photon wavelength prior to impact appears as one chromatic hue on the visible spectrum and another after reflection off its surface because the trajectory of the photon wavelength is, for a fraction of an instant, combined with that of the electron inside its orbital energy shell. The result is the electron assumes mass enough to be measured during this duration while the photon and electron are combined. Such is the essence of quantum mechanics. This occurs along the electron's orbital energy shell level at an arc radian angle determined by a ratio of before and after collision trajectories of the light wave and thus its chromatic tone that quantum mechanics call theta. As theta diminishes asymptotically towards zero the closer to the nucleus the photon wavelength penetrates, the angle of refraction, denoted usually by phi, expands. The duration of time the photoelectric effect can last can thus also approach a zero sum. In this Feynman type diagram I have attempted to model the photoelectric effect where T its duration asymptotically approaches a zero point at a right angle of origin. The electron is modeled as the green and red perpendicular wavelengths while the photon is modeled as a single wavelength in blue. Quantum mechanics refer to the apparent zero time duration of the photoelectric effect wherein the photon is absorbed into the electron illuminating it prior to its being reflected off its surface in an altered trajectory, quantum tunneling. Here is a model of quantum tunneling that may be applied on an intergalactic as well as subquantum level. We see a negative electron and a neutral photon can combine to form a positive quantum tunnel which acts in a large enough mass aggregate like a wormhole that cuts vast distances in space down to approaching zero duration travel time. To return to the photoelectric effect, we find that the frequency of a photon wavelength translates into the momentum of the photon particle during the zero time event while any photon collides with any stable electron energy shell. The momentum and trajectory of the photon particle combine with the prior trajectory of the magnetically negative electron to cancel its charge just long enough for it to be observed. In the same exact moment the photon wavelength bounces off the electron energy shell with a frequency comprised of a combination of its previous particle trajectory and that taken by the electron orbiting in its energy shell. Following the photoelectric effect, the frequency and color of the wavelength is altered, and the electron ceases being a measurable particle and resumes its apparent occupation of all points on its orbital energy shell simultaneously.